Okay? Um, anyways, let this gentleman introduce himself. I'm, um, I'm Ed Sadler, <laughs> retired physics teacher, and I work as an outreach educator at Yerkes Observatory, just down Highway 50, if you haven't been there. Saturday morning, 10, 11, 12, be sure to stop in. Free tours. Um, and there's a star party coming up. Yeah, March, March 6th. And you go to Yerkes, there's Yerkes website that probably has that on or something. Yeah, and it's, it's a free star party. They got yeah. all kinds of telescopes oh. out back, and there's it's fun. it's fun. It really is fun. Okay, and there's also a couple um, sheets of paper that he has over here about some stuff with Yerkes. This summer, there's some summer stuff in there. So anyway, um, we're an outreach educator, and uh, we run a lot of programs and do this, and, and it's just fun to be a Yerkes observatory. My name is Kathy Gustafson, and um, I'm also a retired teacher, but I just retired, so it's kind of fun. But I also do some stuff with Yerkes, and one of the things that um, that enabled me to do was to be part of NASA for just a little bit. I got to fly in this plane, which is an observatory, and it flies up really high. And see, it's got a big hole cut in the side of it, and it goes up a lot higher than a normal plane. In fact, it goes up above 85% of the atmosphere. Why? Because this is an infrared telescope. And I'm going to tell you about infrared telescopes in just a moment. Okay? It is, is something with astronomy that is really cool. This stands for Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. And... You have to have an acronym. You can't yeah. do anything in NASA without an acronym. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. The inside of the plane doesn't have any seats in it or anything. It's got a bunch of um, computer equipment. This is the back end of the telescope, and you just do some really cool things. So if you think of astronomers, you know, sitting out there on a cold night looking through a telescope, there's not a whole lot of that going on. A lot of amateurs do that, but if you're in the astronomy business, you have people taking pictures for you, and yes. then you look at the pictures. And you get the information from that. And you so let's talk about what you would see. Does anybody recognize what this constellation is? Yes. Orion. Orion. Oh, whoa. Orion the Hunter. Awesome. So this is taking invisible light. Orion is out there right now. If it was clear, you would be able to go outside and see it. This is a really big star. That's Betelgeuse or Betelgeuse, some people say. In fact, if you put that star where our sun is, the Earth would be inside that star. It's just a huge... We'd need SPF like 10,000 or something. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would, yeah, wouldn't be good. Okay, so if you take a regular telescope and look, you would just see, okay, there's points of light stars. But if you take an infrared, it would look different. So now I want to ask you something. Let's say that you are a snake. What does a snake see with their eyes? Blurry because they detect, what do they detect with their eyes? They detect heat. And infrared is something that you can see as heat. Okay, so things kind of look like, if they would see a mouse, it would like be red. And they'd say, oh, it's something warm, I'm going to eat it. Boom. If that same snake would look up at the sky and look at that spot, look what he would see. That is the same spot in the sky with infrared, which is kind of what a snake would see. Now infrared's a big band, but basically that's what you would see. So infrared is kind of cool. Now you guys well, probably- Infrared is heat. So this is cool. Well, it's not cool. It's cool stuff. <laughs> oh, be quiet. <laughs> so you guys have all seen this. I bet you use it every day. Okay, turn on the TV. Okay, there is a little tiny LED here, but do you see anything coming out of that LED right now? No. No, it looks like, okay, Nothing's working here. But you can have something that detects that, and I'm going to show you. Right here I have a speaker, and I have a little detector. And it can detect regular light, in fact, fluorescent light. In fact, do you want to hold this for a second for me? Okay. And I am going to just use... I'll go like this. I'm going to use a, just a regular light. And if I put a regular light on it, notice you don't really hear anything. You have to change what your you have to change it. So I change the light, and then you can hear it because that's how a speaker works. The speaker works when there's something changing. That's how a speaker is driven with something changing. And if we turned off the lights, that that hum would go away. Yeah, because these would go off and on. 
So we said that you can't see this, right? I can point this at all you guys and you can't see it. But if I point it here, that's what the TV is seeing or hearing or whatever it's detecting. Now all of these buttons on here, to our ears sound the same, but there's actually... So this is just the speaker doesn't go fast enough to uh, understand that. The TV can pick that up and do that, okay? So thank you for doing that, okay? He is going to turn on. There's the thing, can you see it? Yeah, you don't see it, but if you put it through there, do you see it? So that shows you that the infrared really is working, but our eyes aren't good enough to see it. If we had snake eyes, we'd probably see it. We wouldn't care. Our brain would be too small, right? <laughs> and iPhones, for some reason, have a filter in there. Yeah, so anything with Apple has a filter on it so that the infrared, you wouldn't be able to see. Okay, all right. So let me show you one other kind of cool demo. This right here is a laser, and you can just see it's a, just a very, very, not a very powerful laser. Okay, I can put my hand in front of it. It's not going to burn a hole through my hand. Right but we right. don't ask people to look at those. No, things. you don't put them. You, you don't get have it looking right. in the laser beam because. <laughs> but notice I have something that I can hook up to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my usually Brewer game, but now it's going to be the Bucks game. They're playing the Celtics. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that in. Okay, and I'm going to turn on my laser and the detector, which is the same as like this setup over here. So when I turn this on, it is transmitting that sound over there. So do you want to come over here and help me for a minute? Yeah. Take that card and put it right in between here and here so that you're blocking the laser. Here, hold it up. There you go. You see that? So you see how it easy down. it is to pull it out and put it back in so we can hear it again. Okay, put it back up in there. So see how easy it is to block visible light. Very easy to block visible light. Okay. You want to try the same thing? You want to try that with a piece of pot? I want to try. Sawyer. Well, just wait. You only have a couple things there. Thank you. I'll take the card. So see, she can block that with that very easily. So visible light in space, we can block. So there, you're going to try that plastic bag. Or the okay. turtle, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the turtle, I want you. <laughs> okay, either one. Yeah, yeah. okay. Here. I can block it. Yep. yep, you can. So if you put it all the way in front of there, boom, there you go. The turtle can block it too. Yep. I know. So what you're so, saying is, not, so I what you're saying is pretty oh, much the like this, which is an infrared LED. Okay? So. The oh, wait. I think it's on there, but just. Yeah. Wait a minute. There we go. All right. So now, do we want somebody else to try this? You want to take your picture this? You want to take your goo? You can try your goo first. <laughs> take your plastic bag. The white thing between them. Now do, oh, the, now, do the still, plastic, yeah. now do the plastic bag. Yeah, now do this one. Yeah. See, she's not blocking it. Try the card. Give me. Watch your hand. Your hand's blocking. Yeah. Hey, mom, you can hold it. Can hold it. There you go. There you go. So, okay, thank you. infrared, it's a lot harder to block. And so that's why you get some pretty cool pictures. So for example, if you look towards the center of our galaxy and do any one of you really smart kids know what's at the center of our galaxy? Like a red star. I think it's the, like, the It starts with a B. Black hole? It's black, black hole. hole. Okay. Yeah, most galaxies have a black hole. But we can't see the black hole. Obviously, you can't see a black hole, but you can see stuff around the black hole. But we can't even see anywhere near the center of our galaxy. So, let me just show, show you a, a drawing of our galaxy. Obviously, we can't take a picture of our own galaxy. We haven't been anywhere near far enough away. But the sun is about here, out in this arm. The center of the galaxy where the black hole is here. So, if you look outside in the sky, you can only see 
the stars that are like here. So think of this as like a pepperoni pizza. Pizza, one pepperoni, we can only see the stars within that pepperoni. You have to use telescopes to see more. And if you use an infrared telescope, you can get through all of this dust and stuff and see towards the center of our galaxy. And so if you did that, you'd see something really cool. So this would be in one kind of infrared, a near infrared, I think it is. Yeah, very near to visible light. It's the HST they have. And this is with the Sophia, that one. So that and that are exactly the same spot, but look how different they look. This uh, ring is stuff falling into a black hole in the center. So astronomers love to see different kinds of light in the sky. And the only way you can do that is with the instrument. So astronomers really 